So welcome to another edition of Open for Business. And I have been waiting a very long time to interview Kenneth Martin. He is an artist in Savannah. Um, and he's also a special friend, along with his wife, Teresa, in the back. Um, but Kenneth has an amazing story. And it started when he lived in, in uh, Detroit. Yes. And, had, and became paralyzed in your 20s. And, yes. and you were in a, a wheelchair, right? Yes. Yes. 21 years old. Uh, I was, uh, actually, I was working at Ford Motor Company as an art welder in 65. Mm -hmm. And actually, I was living on the uh, Mustangs and so forth. I loved my job. I thought I was uh, born, work in a factory, make a good income for 30 years and get a good retirement. Fortunately, or unfortunately, I was coming home at that time and there was some uh, oil on the freeway. And as I was exiting on the freeway, I went to skid. Instead of picking my foot off the brake, I started accelerating and got into a tailspin and flipped. And that's had my spinal cord injury. I broke my neck and other parts of my body. It was a C C six seven spinal cord injury, and so um, that did that. I can barely move anything, and I can it's glad I can blink my eyes. So I went home for about ten months, a typical quad and a typical long put you in the wheel electric wheelchair, and that's it. Fortunately, out of Detroit in Ann Arbor, Michigan. At the University of Michigan, they had a pilot program where they converted an old motel into a rehab center where they taught you how to drive, try to live by yourself, try to go to school, taught, taught you how to be totally independent. And basically, it was for paraplegics. So, unfortunately, I got in there and they treated me as a, instead of a quad, as a paraplegic. And first, my family wanted to give me an electric wheelchair because, again, it's convenient and safe, and you know, that's, that was the tradition. But for some reason, I didn't want it. I didn't want that out of, uh, electric wheelchair. Even though it took longer to struggle, that's just so. Anyway, so now I'm in the rehab center, so that's how I got to. So you actually started off as a welder, and yes. now you're in your 70s. You are this very well-known artist. Um, I want to hear how all that came about. That's a good question. But initially, that was my choice of life. My choice of life, I was not, I talked a whole lot of, uh, I talked a whole lot of uh, great artists. And they knew in childhood that was their passion. That was not my passion. Art was not on my radar at all. Unfortunately, when I was going through my rehab in the therapy in an opera, there's a well known artist named John Lockhart. He was a black radical artist. He did one of the first uh, black messiahs, black Madonna suits in that name expressing radicalism and expressing uh, concepts to all painting. So my therapist uh, asked me, Ken, why don't you take an all paint, uh, all class? Well, okay, I couldn't go to back to factory. So I said, okay, I'll take it. So that was the feed of me getting in, exposing me to art. Kenneth, do you have any paintings from when you first took that class many years ago? <laughs> I wish I did. No, all no, all my paintings are sold. Like that's like over in the in what, 68, 69. It's sold. My family. No, no, I don't. I got one. Let me say, no, I don't. Wow. So how would you describe your art? now like if somebody's just tuning in and they they're learning about you what 
how would you describe your style? What what do you do? How do you my, uh, my approach? I know about oil painting and my approach is in oil painting. Oils. The first thing I do, I teach them how to look at value tones, arrangement, color. Value tones, the range of color the first thing that you establish. Where are your value tones going to be? It could be a still life, landscape, or it could be a portrait. But every object has a shadow, mid-tone, light tones. You establish that first. Like now, currently, I work with the veterans who's uh, dealing with PTSD. But they have been four, five, six, six years now. And most of them say, I'm not born an artist. I don't have art skills. But my goal is not to teach them to be an artist. It's to uh, deal with the uh, being intimidated with pain. Most folks are intimidated say, I can't. But most people are very successful in other areas. And so I once I break the intimidation and learn a value tone, dark, medium, light, and mainly I go mono. Because if you're dealing with color, it's like with something in cooking. You can push how to cook salt, pepper, garlic. You give it that first, not the other spices. Painting the primary colors, you know, the yet yellow, uh, red, blue. Kind of what do they do? From that, everything made from the primary colors. That's the first step. Break down the intimidation. And now it's amazing what the vets can do now. They just go off and on. That's the first step. Getting rid of the I can't and the intimidation of being this thing. So I, I have a picture here. Let me pull it up of some of your work. Uh, I, your portraits are just spectacular. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look at that. That is just spectacular. Look at all the reds and the yellows and the blues. I mean, tell me about this painting. That I'm Let's glad see. you pulled that up. That is, that was my, I did that in 07. When I came to uh, Savannah. And that there was a concept in my head. I saw a young lady. I'm impressed with people. And I saw that, so it began to evolve into. Now, when I start off, I really don't know where I'm going. I just hit the camera. Most artists basically know where they're going. They are trained. I'm not, I'm about 90% self taught. So I, I really just stop painting. Then it began to evolve, and thoughts begin to come to my head. That painting is started with just a face of a woman with a shawl on her head. But then again, I want to express something. I like expressing an attitude. That's called the provider. Mm -hmm. When I begin to paint, I realize who has the most impact in my life? It's number one, my mom, she has given me so much. So on her head is not food, vegetables. It's essence. It's, it's uh, what I want to say. It's uh, issues of life. How to deal with stuff. My mom taught me how to deal with things. So women are providers in that area. But that, yes, that's how that got started. And the, and, and the background, interesting. First, it was, it was just her. But I went to South Carolina and I did begin to uh, and see the marshlands in the area. So the marshlands had a lot of color to it in, in the gray areas. Of, so I put that in the background. Yeah. So that evolved over the months of looking, not just painting, but looking <laughs> and what do I want to say? Yes, that is. Yeah, I love how you can make the face, it's very realistic looking. And then the background, you just, it, it's got such a texture look to it. And I, I, I really, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> so I'm glad you say that because 
be honest, I don't know how I do it. But what impressed me is contrast. Because contrast. That's the word I'm looking for. Contrast. Yes. Yeah. Look, life is about contrast. People are like contrast. It's for example, in her face, I want to make it soft, but the background, I want to get more texturally because that's how we see things. We see things. If you notice what I said before about value tones, dark, yeah. mid, light tones. You establish that first, and then mm -hmm. contrast make a difference. Soft, hard, soft lines, hard, hard lines. Hard lines bring you in. Soft lines fade you out, and we that that's how we see. Okay, so when you when you approach a a, a blank canvas like this, yes. What, what's the first thing that you do if you were going to be drawing that same picture? If you were going to be painting that, what would you be doing? I establish foreground, midground, midground, background. I've established first, what's the main character? I, like, like, like in theater, who's the main character? Who are the, the supporting cast? In the, back, in the foreground, he's the main character. The background is the supporting cast. You don't want the you don't want the uh, supporting cast to dominate the main character. You want to support that. So that's how I think. What? Right. The, yeah. The main who's the main character? Who's the main object? And then you pull that with color. Color can do that. Um, shapes can do that. Texture can do that. Contrast can do that. It's a range. That's the main thing. What do I want to say? And who's the main character? So, Kenneth, when you're deciding that, do you put your palette out first? And is do you start with a very limited palette of just the primaries? And do you use black and white? Uh, okay. The best way to go, I like going monochromatic first. Like, mm -hmm. for example, I take the blues. I could do a range of blues in oil paintings, for example, dark, mid, light blues. After it dry, I could put any color over that. You might not see the blue, but the blue is gonna make a statement. A dark blue, when it's dry, will make a statement different than a light blue if you put a red over it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I have a monochromatic one here. Now, what what is, I think this is your painting. I hope it is. Is that, yeah. that's, okay, that's easy. girl, you show no my stuff. Uh, <laughs> I did that in. Let me say something. I did that in 80, 81. And again, what impressed me was I was going to a National Geographic magazine, right? And I saw this sharecropper, and he. He reminded me so much of my father, or that generation of the 20s and 30s, uh, not just from the African American culture, but from Irish, uh, German, who came over there was hard workers. They worked in the factory. And um, it impressed me. My father worked two eight hour jobs for 30 years. But when you come to the Migrants who came from Germany, Poland, Irish, they worked very, very hard. And the main thing was their family. And my wife, the writing on the background, she did the poetry called uh, Beauty Marks. And I wanted to capture again an attitude. And yeah, and I think it's done beautifully monochromatically too. I think yeah. the color would have made it too joyful or something. That's the point. A lot of times people think color, 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 color. No, that's why I establish the mono first. The mono makes a statement. You can have a one great monochromatic with dark tone, mid tone, light tone. And if it's right, it's great. You get a bunch of color and it's mess. So you establish that first. And I mean, that's how I approach it. So here's another one, and it, it it's 
kind of monochromatic, but you definitely have added color. So this one here. Ah, uh, yeah, that's Lee's door. Same thing. I'm start off very simple mono. He that's Lee's. He's a um, ex slave in 1870s, and he, he kept the slave master's name, and he's the first African American millionaire. He, he moved to um, California and uh, built schools. I think he built schools and roads. He's well, yeah, yeah. And I start the same, the same approach, very subtly. Then when you dread, you can always add color subtly, but to keep it to me, to keep things simple that people can see and not make it too busy. So Kenneth, did you start with the, the, the head first or did you just start with shapes and, and, and values and then work it more into? I started with the, um, how do I put this? I started with the um, head, yeah, the head first. I mean, I say the, the structure first. Okay. Yeah, I started with the structure first. The head, the shoulders, but I didn't start with that glasses, no, no. Mm -hmm. It's the circular head and the squarish shoulders. Then I put the the a uh, dark value tone on the, I guess my left, your right. That I established that with the darker spots on there, with the mid tone spots, and then you begin to, then you begin to uh, go from there. From the mid tone to dark, is something in between there. So it's really more mathematical. And just doing oxy, and it's, e it's easy to teach. Mono is the best way to teach because it gives you a sense of form, form, and, and value. It gives you that sense. Mono is the best way to teach oil paint. To me, to me oil painting. Now, okay, no. I'm, anything, but to me, okay, I know to me, acrylic it dries too fast. Okay, but you can still work with it with water, but um. You can dress it fast, but you can work with it. With oils, if you mess up, you can just wipe out solo again. Or Do you, is there a certain type of paint that you like over another one, a certain type of paintbrush that you like better? Do you like turpentine versus something else? Oh, no, I like turp. I like, I like, um, I like exploring, discovering. No, there's, there's nothing better. It depends. Sometimes I like this turp. And um, a little oil. What Sometimes, kind of oil? Um, linseed, but I'm not, linseed oil. Uh, some, yeah, linseed oil. I mean, there's other oils out there. I've dabbled with all of them, but there's no particular. There's no particular. Hmm. So you, with your portraits, you start out monochromatic. Do you start off with a, a very light wash, or do you use a knife? Uh, a brush, a wash. I start off with a very, a very uh, wash, so to speak, to get the form. And again, I establish the sound repetitious value tones. Mm -hmm. And it's so important. Where do I want it to go? Not heavy. Uh, now, some I have started this, you know, over the years. You know, I'm sort of I'm, I feel like I can do anything I want to do. But when I first start off, I'm teaching. So very light and build up, build up, build up. If, if I'm teaching, that's why I teach the veterans. Start off in very light. Now, sometimes I just go in and start slapping paint and then shifting around. And then, just, but I can do that. If I mess up, I know where I'm going. Right. But it's different. What do you think art has brought to your life and to the vets that you teach? Oh, that is a great question. It surprised me, uh, Margie. I first started teaching the veterans art about eight years ago. Eight and years ago? Yeah, eight years ago at the VA uh, clinic when we were on Montgomery Crossroads. And I was working at this company where the lady said, Kenneth, my boss put on my desk about going in the community and teaching veterans art. I said, well, you know, I don't know about that. She said, well, Ken, you're an artist. I said, I said, okay, I will. I figured it would be a six weeks program. 
at the old vet center. I went in there, about 20 guys sitting around looking at me. Aww. And I sensed them saying, what this, I mean, you know, what this guy, what, what's this guy going to do? What is he going to do? So I said, um, you know, I'm an artist, so I'm going to do some art. So they got around and asked me some very, uh, very aggressive antagonistic questions. Uh oh. And they said, you know what, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm been in Vietnam, I've been in, uh, been in Iraq, you know, we kill people. What is art going to do? I said, well, put, and then it's, oh, they said, oh, I'm not an artist. I said, well, I'm not here to teach you uh, be an artist. I'm teaching you not to be intimidated by pain. I said, you you to, back. I said, you've been to boot camp <laughs> to that, you're going to be in prayer list. So they backed off, they looked at me. So after two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, it was over. But they didn't want to quit. They kept on going, kept on going. And Islam mm -hmm. said, Ken, this is better than getting drunk. <laughs> or, or Ken, this is better than hanging at the bar. Or Ken, I like this. And what it does, art has a way to make you to explore out of yourself. And that's what I've learned. You can go into a traumatic experience that art has a way of getting you out of how you feel, what you think you can do. It's a whole different realm of exploration. So my approach is to explore from the cognitive, the emotional. That's all we know. You know, we, we know cognitive, we know emotional. But the artistic part, we figure you have to be an artist. No, we create every day. It's in our DNA to be imaginative. So once you tap into that, it's ah. And that light comes on one particular, uh, there's a strong veteran. He didn't know yellow and blue made green. And he was very, but now, um, eight years later, he's doing portraits. He moved to uh, LA. He loves it. He loves it. He's a kid. You saved my life. Now, that was not my intent. My intent was to do six weeks and get out there and get my own little work. But, wow. I, but I saw the the impact of art and that's my first introduction to, to me to appreciate the power that god has given me I, again Mark, i didn't choose this on this profession i, I chose you yes i rather be in a factory and working that five. but this is so but it's so beautiful discovering and people love discovering and a lot of times when i'm teaching the veterans and we and we get into this deep funk of I what to do. I said, look at here, um, Lewis and Clark, they started in Connecticut, ain't no nothing. But they start going, going. I said, if they had stayed there, they wouldn't have discovered nothing. Art is the same way, they explored. They had risk, tragedies, and successes, but they, they begin to explore something. So I put it in that vein, that mindset. You are explored. You know, you're not an artist. You want to go from knowing where you're at, not knowing. And that's, to me, that's my definition of creativity. Creativity is exploring what you don't know. Breaking that, I'm afraid. I don't know. But we are, we have, we are designed to discover. How do so, you, Kenneth, how do you encourage them to not be afraid of picking up the brush and making that first stroke? Uh, I compare, I appreciate where the experience of uh, the war, the, uh, the tragedy of what they had to lose friends. And I'm saying, again, we have been, we have to boot camp, dude. You scared this brush, you know? Was, come on now. You scared of that? And they, they mean the laugh. And so, but once I, once they break that, see yellow and blue and green oh they didn't know that that's a discovery and the arrangements you can do of that being one student now each person is different some people are more abstractish i let them flow in that i don't want them to copy what i do matter of fact i do not bring my artwork 
to the studio because mm. they will see that and say, oh, I can't do that. So I give them that clear canvas. And once they see that they can make a sunset and grass by using greens and yellows and reds and water, they be off to the races. Once they discover that they can discover, if that makes sense, once they discover that they can discover a new aspect of themselves, that's what they do. It's really yeah. fascinating. If that makes sense. Absolutely. I, I, I just know there's a whole industry of art therapy and, and you're doing it, you're paying it forward. But you know, Margaret, that word therapy and healing therapy, they don't like that word. Okay, that's because good insight. They, they get that word therapy from their therapist, from their doctor, and it gives, gives them a mindset. I never approach, even with me, I don't consider therapy. I consider, come on, let's explore. explore. Let's do oh, I love adventure. that. Let's do adventure. Let's discover what you can do with this stuff. Some slap it on. I had an abstract person. Matter of fact, I wish we could have a uh, show with the veterans. There's one guy, Leroy Bolden, uh, and uh, uh, he is great. He started off very traditional, methodical, but now he does some great work. I want you to meet him. I wish I would be able to. I really want to introduce them to you. It's especially Leroy. He is amazing. He started doing on maybe eight by ten paintings. Now he's doing thirty by forty abstract pour art. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, you your jaw will drop. I I really want you and Leroy to be on Honor Lynn's show. She started the Heart Initiative. And ah, she's an artist. Let me sign us up. Yes, I we will. We're gonna get you on that that show for sure. Um, me, me and Leroy, he's he's a Vietnam vet. And uh, <laughs> and he's very, he's more articulate than I am. He right and he's funny and he's good. Yeah. What's Who is one of your favorite artists um, outside of Savannah and not even of this period? I mean, do you like Impressionism? Do you like Renaissance? I mean, who, who's an artist that you love? Again, or let's say a famous one that all of us might know. Okay, so you might know. Okay, everybody know Rembrandt. Rembrandt. Everybody know what's his name? Uh, oh, that's, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I'm not an art history knower. It's I, okay. My 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 favorite artist was John Lockhart. In, and I would mention he's passed now. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Snowden, she's more of an abstract person. And oh, a current person, you know him, uh, 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 Carl Fugaroos. Okay. Do you know Carl? I know who he is, yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Carl, those who, they, uh, they are sort of, all three are very uh, unorthodox. So let's let's drill down a little bit more. What is some aspect of Carl's artwork that you could use in your artwork? His uh, methodical approach to old school, value tone, mid tone, light tone. Now I know he gets into the, um, the but that's, I like that. Yeah, I like that. That's simple and Anyone who can draw from that. If that makes sense. I like I like Carl. And uh yeah, I like Carl. Okay. So what about the other two artists? Uh, the same thing. Now John Lockhart, he's more like an activist, a black activist. And uh he made a statement saying whatever an artist do, say something. Make mm -hmm. make a statement. Make a social statement, Kim. Don't just be doing pretty stuff. And still, he said, wow, 
Kenneth, you have. I, let the audience know some of the statements that you have done over the years. Yeah. Um, one I'm working on now is, um, did you see the one with the books on my head? No. Uh, um, yeah, wait a second. I might have. No, you don't. Uh, no, don't. Let me get, this is uh, my brother-in-law. My son-in-law, Toya. Oh, yes. Tell us about this, Kenneth. Okay, there's going to get real, real close to it. Hey, can you see it when we get closer or what? Yep, move it. Yeah, and bring it a little bit closer in. There we go. So it's a picture of a woman with some books on top of her head. Okay. Now, in the background, the woman in the books on her head, she's a... a depicting uh, education empowerment. Women in the background are your, your traditional view of women undervalued. Wow. And the statement is uh, 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 education empowering of education. And I was inspired by, I did about four years ago, I was inspired by how undervalued uh, how to put it, how um, undervalued people in our history had to deal with women uh, from a uh, uh, human resource. They could say women be undervalued, you either, either in the kitchen or in the bed. That's a strong suit. But we, we know as history, if you give it the women an equal playing field academically, they can supersede what men do. Men have, yeah, that's my, that's that, that's my latest one. That's that is one, quite a statement, Kenneth. That's the one I'm sending to uh, Jill Biden. I think he's in the mail today. And I wrote a letter with that. Uh, so to, you're sending this this painting to Joe Biden? Is that what you said? Yes, even as we speak today, Jill. Even as we speak. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Saying, and with a letter, Saying my view of oh yeah, that's the box right there that's going out. Awesome. What is it? Oh, it does. It says President Joe Biden. Is that what it says in the upper left hand no, corner? No. Dr. Joe Biden. Do oh, to the, the to the wife, you're right. With yes. education. Absolutely. It, yes, it'd be called. I don't want Senator uh, uh Joe Biden, he's too busy. I don't want I, I don't want Senator uh, uh Kamala Harris. She's too busy. Jill, she's a doctor in education. Absolutely. She will see the value of that painting showing women the importance of education and how they've been undervalued. Yeah, and uh, what they globally, because she's taught in other countries. It's a global movement. I'm sensing a global movement of women getting there as they just proper as far as academically. And and the again the blame as you were blame is on society as a whole. Since men, so to speak, is driving the truck, they don't value women beyond the kitchen in the bedroom. What are you, what are your hopes for Dr. Biden to use the painting for? Oh, that's a real good. Oh, okay, I hope she could motivate. people who have the leverage to change their mindset. The yeah. most that other people, not just in America, other countries, India, Africa, uh, Europe. And I believe that humanity will, will benefit a great deal if we had more women to have the opportunity to explore a full potential. Look, look in the Arab in the Arab countries. They can't drive, so they ask their husband. That's that's uh, ludicrous. They can't get education. I mean, that's like they can't be taught or trained. I mean, it's like a resource, a human resource that you're not using. I think it would really advance people as a whole, societies and communities. That's my passion there today. I see it, so that's that's why I wanted to. See. If she has the leverage uh, to do that, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm using too far, but that's how I feel. 
nothing ventured, nothing gained. Yeah. And, and see, it's interesting. If you study women back then with all those heavy things in their head, it's heavy. Well, education, those books are very heavy in paper, but they can handle it. Women can adapt a lot more than we, the men can. I believe that. Because I, I have a good example. My daughter, um, she's advancing so well. She started off as a nurse's aide. Now she's teaching in, at a school. And she had a hard time fighting up. I can talk more about her, but yes, it's, it's, I just believe that as a, as a, as humanity, yeah. we have to look at women and give them props. You Can you get a poster of that wonderful painting for your daughter's classroom? And it'd be a great, <laughs> you write a poem that goes with it too? That, yeah, yes, but that, yeah, that's a, I have a lot of prints of that. I plan on doing that. Oh, Kenneth, you know what you could do? What? You could ask, you could ask your daughter's classroom to write a poem to to do a narrative about that. Well, no, 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 no. She's in nurse education. A nurse. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, no, that, that I said to say, but no, she's a nurse education. She teaches people to be nurses. Wow, I have another picture here, Kenneth. What is this one about? Uh, that's called a uh, Agents of change. Was that a show? Huh? Was that a show that you had? Yes, I had that show. The date is in forty. That was at the Jepson Museum, I believe. Uh, yeah, I can see that. And there's another one. I, I've just followed your artwork for so many years. This one. What what show was that? Oh, that's at the old uh, Savannah on, uh, come on now. You know, you went there at the uh, Art Museum. Is it the Hen one on Henry Street? Henry Street, yes. Okay, 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 yes, yeah. Yes, yes. That's okay, okay. that one. Oh, and I found another one here that I just love of your wife, Teresa. This uh -huh. looks like Dells or something. Yeah, I did that in uh, Detroit before we left. That's pastel, right? That's pastel. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's pastel. Again, I like capturing the attitude more than anything else. Well, here's another one of Teresa. Yes, I did that. The artist here, I was in this studio. That's uh, Maniscalco. Man, he's an Italian artist. He was in uh, Detroit. Now he moved to South Carolina. Robert mm. Robert Maniscalco. He his father was a, a famous artist, and he adapted mm. uh, from his father. He learned a lot from his father. Uh, oh, so you did not do this one? No, I did that in. I had a class with him. Oh, with a class. Okay, and, I love it. Wow. Yeah, and he taught me again that same concept of. Uh, value tones and keeping it simple. So how did you get Teresa's skin tone on that? Because doing portraits in art is so hard. Well, again, I don't want to sound redundant, but it's the same thing. Start off uh, very mild, and then I don't pick up browns. Certain things mm -hmm. you do. Uh, That's beautiful. It's and I, I see you saying, uh, Marjorie, how did I get the tones? You, the value tones, dark, light tone, and like on the darker side where the shadow is at, yeah. start a darker value, and then you let that dry, and then when the light goes over that, the light will, uh, Wow. Very softly. But it's it's a very methodical with oil painting, very methodical process, different than acrylic or water. Kenneth, how long does it take a painting? How long did, did it take to do this painting? It took that in settings. I set three hours, one setting, like a basic wow. composition down. Then I let it dry, 
come back and it's layering because if you put oil paint or wet paint it's not going to layer as well as let's say dry so let it dry. okay okay that's the key let it the oil paint let it dry so after it's dry i can have a like the dark value on the right side after dry i want that little light to go through when it's dry i took a lighter tones and put over that so it's going to jump on that but it's going to layer it and you'll be able to see through more transparent and do you end with the lighter values like under her cheek and on yes, the yes on yes the yes yes mm -hmm. for example that's where you end and then you don't again it's good to know what you are that's why you establish your value tone first i'm getting sound redundant but for example if the light forehead wants to stick out, I'm not going to put a dark value tone there. Okay. I'll put a lighter value tone. And you can do that with a, with a monochromatic. Now, that could, that, that painting there could be all in blue. It's the same thing, mm -hmm. all in blue. You start it with blue as a monotone. No, no, no. It can be. It, 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 it could oh, be. Okay. Then okay. I can cover it with the browns. The blue won't show, but the dark blue and putting a brown over that, the brown gonna overlay over that dark blue, it will give you a brownish, a darker tone. It's hot. How do you decide what kind of background to paint on on that one? That's a good question. I uh start off don't know. I hit the foreground. And I let it sit and I try to apply some of the tones that's in the foreground into the background. If ah. you notice uh the darkest background on this on your chin, yep, the same back tone that's on her shoulder. And a little in her hair too, and her eyes. Yes, yes, that tone and the and the lighter background that say see over her head that grayish brownish yes there's some in her face so you pull it's that to make that with that harmonious flow of the background the same tones you use in the foreground you can use it in the background in a different form but the same color so kenneth do you start with doing a pencil drawing or is it ac actually the a very thinned out paint Paint, paint. Uh, start off with uh, with my paint. Yeah. Some artists, some artists do pencil. Some parts do a sketch with ink. And you know, I rather start off was with uh, uh, between a little turp, a little, a little turp, very dab of of, of uh, oil, and I decide doing it. But don't like it. I can always go over it. Awesome. I keep it flu I keep it free and flowing. Kenneth, do you have any favorite quotes about art or favorite poetry or uh, let me say or any saying that you love about art? Uh yes. Uh, to me, like I said to me, cre this creativity and art I like discovering. That's a I like using a losing car as an example. I love that. It example. explores. It art to me, adventure, adventure, adventure. Art is an adventure. And that's what I like about art. It's an adventure. And that keeps me cool. If you sit down and say, I'm going to do a painting or a masterpiece, or that locks you in. No, I want to see what I want to yeah. discover. It's, a, it's an adventure. And I think a lot of people are very intimidated by that that they they can't sit down immediately and do a masterpiece i mean what what would be the best way to get somebody painting just doing the values doing shading yes yes, yes. not to do not to, not to compare comparison and okay. subconsciously, subconsciously they have the monet the rembrandt the their cousin who's a painter Blah 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 in the in, in the unconscious, yeah, in the, in the conscious, and that's the mistake. That's the mistake. 
don't do that. You are you. I can't. I can't be. Uh, and that was my challenge, Roger. I I really didn't embrace art as a I'm a painter about three years ago. Really? What was the switch? Because I compared myself, my uh, trainers, my, my teachers, Lockhart. I'm not a John Lockhart. I'm not a. Uh, uh, you're a Kenneth Martin. Yeah, I'm not Robert Martin Robert Mar Mar School. I'm not uh, uh, all those people. I'm not. I'm not a powerful group. I'm. I'm Kenneth. And and this is what I. I didn't choose this. Now, like Lockhart, the rest of them, they chose that. I never chose that. And I mean, it wasn't again. It was not my forte. Never. But now, mm -hmm. you know, and even today. I'm still struggling with you know what you want to do. Which one, some have a dear, dear friend uh, uh, in Detroit. We the school together back in the uh, 90s. That girl, she breathes art. She's a walking artist. I mean, I just I don't know. She's a person. Who's that in Detroit? What's her name now? So, Sabrina Nelson. Mm -hmm. You get a chance. Look up Sabrina Nelson, Detroit, Michigan. That girl, she. Now she she has a passion for it. I really can't say I have a passion for art. I should, but I do have, I have a passion for learning. I have a passion for exploring those things. Then I might get an idea in history. Then I want to express it in the painting. It's like, for example, uh, it's like, for example, the women's movement or mm -hmm. the uh, uh, soldiers. That's a passion of the, uh, the Vietnam, the uh, Desert Storm. That, I, that's a passion for me. Okay, I can put that in the painting. But right. some artists, they have a passion just to paint. I don't have a passion just to paint. Mm -hmm. The passion I do, I do something else. I'll study the end, it will kick in over here. I'm going to say this. So my best avenue is put it on canvas, can you? Put it on canvas. So Kenneth, how often do you paint? Is it daily, weekly, monthly? Do you keep your studio set up? It's set up, but I paint in skirts. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first came here and had the uh, opportunity to do this composition at the Jepson, yeah. they had a the, uh, uh, slave uh, symposium. I had to do 18 paintings uh, for the exhibit. And uh, yeah, it's true. But then again, sometimes I, I, sometimes I get in droughts. I can go a whole year without painting. But I've been doing something else. So that's why I'm saying I don't have a passion for this thing. Do you uh, sketch? Do you, do you do pencil sketching no, at all? No, 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 no. I, I, should, I don't. Do I got it stay in my it stay in my head to come on the canvas. So Kenneth, before your accident, were you left-handed or right-handed? And what and what hand do you uh, use? Uh, right-handed. You were right-handed? Yes, right-handed. And you still paint with your right hand. Right hand. And as you see, I don't have the uh finger dexterity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. It's been really good right hand. So when you had the accident, could you move your hand in your arm at first? Oh no, no! I think nothing really set up. Get out of the quad. I barely set up. No, I can no at all. Wow. That's good. Yeah, I can do anything at all. And the therapy uh, back then taught me how to be independent. Taught me how to uh, work things. Go beyond. What you can't do. I remember this painting, this picture here, when you gave a talk to. Well, where did it go? Did you get this here? It was at Armstrong. Hold on. Oh, here, this painting. And you, it, it was, you have such an inspirational story, Kenneth, of how you have overcome your. Whoa. Yes. That's, remember this? Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. A piece of Can you come in a minute? Um, that there, okay, again, 
The concept came to my head. My first game here in 07. Um, that's called Kill the Beast. Mm -hmm. There's a warrior in the foreground, a lion in the midground, the spirit of and the community in the background. And wow. the concept was Kill the Beast. I don't know where I was, I was going to read. I was reading something about how people need to make a decision and they don't. They just sit around, sit around, but, 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 and so uh, that's another one. Oh my goodness! Yes, right there. See, and and then the spirit in the background, and it's called kill the beast because a lot of times the concept is they are saying that bothering us, that's toxic us, and we let it too much into our environment. We need to get rid of it. We don't need a committee. For us to make a, a decision. So this is another statement painting. Yeah, statement, yeah, statement painting. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay. Allegory. Yeah, and also allegory. Also, you you say what? Well, that's good enough. You say what? Well, why do I paint? Or well, no? How I paint? I was in uh, Miami about eight years ago, and I wasn't painting. I was on the beach at nighttime. And I was just on the uh, seawall, and the waves were crashing against the wall, crashing against the wall on the Atlantic Ocean. I was just sitting there looking, and I said, oh, this is Atlantic Ocean. Oh, this is a Miami Beach. And the thought came to me, if I keep straight from Miami across the Atlantic Ocean, I'll run into Africa. And I said, oh, 20 years ago, this is this this was a slave trade, and my heart I began to cry. I felt the experience of the transatlantic trade trade, and the beach became more than just a beach. It became a oh a suffering place. I don't know what word to use. It's like it was very tragic. So I wrote, I did a painting of a lady on the beach relaxing but in the background i had sh slave ships come in and mm -hmm. people uh yeah so yeah that's so kenneth you, you painted all that from your imagination yeah you from magazines or no 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 but i saw for some reason yeah if i said you asked me what i'm a painter i guess the word you use a conceptual I'm not making a statement. Mm -hmm. I forgot what you said. You said something about, um, I said a conceptual piece. You said something, you said something else. What did you say about that uh, the last piece? Did you, do you use um, magazines or? No, 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 no. I mean, um, no, no, no. I can't. It just comes right out of your head and you put yeah, it right on yeah, the canvas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I might get a magazine to get a position mm -hmm. sitting, standing, but I'm not copying it. That's oh, okay, that's how to sit. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Maybe it's out of my head. You, like, you're out of my head. I just love your style, Kenneth. And I, I'm just I want to preserve it forever and just sure. just let people know how how you do it i mean but you know marjorie i appreciate this because uh i never analyze or dissected what i do i just do it and sometimes i forget how it's done and even sometimes i'm saying i'm surprised that it's even there and some things i've done i can remember i did it i've been doing it for the last what uh maybe 50 years now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I see how I've evolved. 
that's another question. How have you evolved? What did your first paintings look like? How would you describe them? And now, how would you describe your currents? My first painting was a very abstract, um, no faces, no more color. Do it here, yeah, more color kind of thing. And it began to evolve when I began to want to um, learn more about this art book, this, okay. this um, profession as I evolved. I began and then what was the next stage? What did your next my phase my, of art look my, like? My, my next say from abstract to more realism to mm -hmm. uh, I was tracking the portraits, but I don't like portraits. I prefer more, I guess, the express, what's the an impressionistic. Yes. More impressionistic. That's why I was attracted to your artwork, with, yeah. because you've managed to capture the portraits in a very impressionistic, it, it, they have so much movement to them. Um, yeah. And yeah. And, yeah. I, and, and I don't want to lock, lots of times when you go to school, mm -hmm. learn technique from a teacher. And you step with that. I uh, it's good to learn basics, but I'm gonna learn um, how Fuggles technique. I don't want to learn. Um, I want to learn what it does, but I want to have it flow. I let it flow. Explore. Explore. Yes, I like to explore an adventure and not be a copy. And that's where I'm beginning to embrace my style now. You've had to do that with your life and from your accident. Yes. I mean, I, you had to completely explore and reinvent. I had to, I had to reinvent. Yes, ma'am. I had to reinvent. And now I'm learning that in my new phase of what I'm going to do. I'm not going to try to be that. Because you try to be so perfect. You know, with, with the all with, with the other teachers being uh, uh, man of scale cold and uh, and uh, powerful groups, they so perfect. I don't want to be there. Exactly, Kenneth. And that's um, if you want to be perfect, just take a photograph. I mean, <laughs> you took your, that's what I always say. You want to take a photograph? That's not me. It's not art for me. I yeah. mean, it, it doesn't show who you are. It's not that. That artistic signature of Kenneth. I mean, I love to be able to look at your artwork and say, "That's a Kenneth Martin," or "That's a Matisse." I mean, every, everything has a signature look. Yeah, exactly. Oh, good example. I'm working on now my uh, great granddaughter. She's 17. Michelle. She's come to the Jepson with me on weekends, and she has a lot of Afro hair going everywhere, everywhere. So. I'm doing her now, so I told this. this uh, she goes to uh, Savannah Academy. Mm -hmm. she go, she, this is her senior year, so I'm doing her. So I don't want to do a portrait of her. Her hair is just so everywhere, and she is so shale. I want to capture that looseness, intellect person, but not a photograph. Right. So now I'm just doing her hair. It's all. I mean that afro is. Everywhere is in knots, is in it's like you roll out the bed, and here I am. I like that. I see a lot of young people doing that now, you know, they and they are embracing their culture. So, I'm doing a picture of her monochromatic, and I'm doing it in blue. Now, after that blue dry, I might put a little kind of warmth in there, you know, a little warmth of the hair, and the hair is tucked down like that. So, I, I'm like down looking at the hair. And so you don't, you don't see her face. You see her maybe her eyes and nose, but that's it. I might leave it like that. I don't know. So that's I like that style. I'm tired of being okay. Let me just get this eyebrow right to get that nose. You know, there's no rules for art. There's none. You know, whatever you do is okay. It's okay. Yeah. It's uh, now. Now to me. Okay. 
it's rules. This is my thing. Before you can think out of the box, you have to know what's in the box. That's me. Keep so going. I wanna, yeah, I, I want to know what's in there so I can think out of the box. I just want to slap stuff around and say, okay, this uh, that's my own personal view. I, I still like learning structure, form, basics. I think you, you look at nature, look at life, and it's structure too. But still, they, they allows me to go out of the box from um, structure. I believe in structure. Kenneth, that right there is the kind of Kenneth-isms I'm looking <laughs> for. That right there, I you need to know what's in your box to, so then you can go explore. Beautiful. Yeah, you can explore. So let's let, I think my life is that. I'm, I am a, I was talking about older sister she's 89 she's the first one that took me to a, a museum in detroit when i was uh 11 years old and i was old i went there my mouth was dropped Aww. all of my families they're not they just you know do, do traditional hard working but she's the first one my sister shirley is 89 now and she is my she's not an artist she's mm -hmm. a lover of life Hmm. That's an artist. <laughs> yeah, and she's a kind of you have always been a, a maverick. Said, okay, I accept that. My most family was very traditional, very traditional. Mm -hmm. yeah. but again, I appreciate that. I'm, this is really good. This is good therapy for me. Use that word. It it's just it, it's so fun to talk with an artist and to hear how you think and create and motivate. And um, you don't, I don't hear that a lot from artists. Um, no, I was just, aren't you still painting? You took some classes, didn't you? Yeah, I'm, I've am i always painted in the background, so. Well, then now what is, okay, flip it. What is your preference? Watercolor, oil paint, pencil, pastel? So with my mom, I always grew up with acrylics and watercolors. Uh -huh. um, about five years ago, I started doing some oils and um, landscapes. Just yeah, yeah, just some uh, landscapes. Do you go out, uh, find there, or you will go for, uh, photos or what? Or books? I've been doing photos, and I've been doing really small ones because I don't want to take up too much room in my tiny little house. So I do really small <laughs> ones. And I send them off as postcards, <laughs> so they they go through the mail yeah. once they arrive. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. You do the, I, I know you, you are in. Uh, are you in the, the marshland or do you do? Uh, yeah, I like cityscapes or countrysides, and I love houses. Um, and and I like to paint with a with this. I like to paint with a. And they, right. ah. Uh, yeah. Very opaque. Yes. Yeah. I just like the looseness of it. And that's why I love your work, Kenneth, because it's so loose and it's so um it's got so much movement and it's so non-photographic. It, it it's just a, a lot of movement in it. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, I really Absolutely. I want to figure out if there's anything else that you want to okay, what would you tell a third grader who loves to draw, what would you tell them about art and a career? Tell you, number one, continue doing what you're doing. Number two, don't be dismayed or uh, dismayed about the art, the term starving artist, no. It's a profession. It's in competition, and embrace that. And if you love it, there's a spot for you. Great. Keep on doing. Keep on doing that. That's that's what I would say. And you might not quote be a creative artist, but you might be a CEO in a corporation, but you're still creative. 
Creativity is not with pain. Creativity is exploring an adventure. That's creativity. That's creative. So you might put down your paintbrush and put up and pick up a um, scalpel or a nurse. That's still creativity. Adventure is creativity. Art is not pain, it's just an expression in paint, watercolor. Creativity is universal. You can be a teacher and be very creative. I know some, some teachers aren't creative and they stuck. They don't know what they do with the Zoom. If you are an artist, you can be creative with the Zoom. Problem solvers. So what I'm saying, that's the Art is problem solving. It's all it is. And when I, I'm going to solve it uh, in paint with picking gooey, gooey uh, paint and gooey, gooey and put it on a white canvas and, and organizing it and arranging it and designing it. Mm -hmm. You got painting. Well, being a teacher, the same thing. You, it's a, a being... What, what you do, a marketer, you're dealing with people, you have to arrange this, push this, don't push that. That's creativity. Absolutely. That's creativity. Yeah. So I have another question for you. What happens when you feel like you don't have any creativity? How do you find that spark again? What I used to do in Detroit, I, I had to go, there's a place in Detroit called Center for Creative Studies. It's a, it is a great school. When I felt, uh, uh, so where on you suffocated by life, I would go in that school and just walk through the a hall and love it. Here, you don't have it. Now, SCAD don't have a particular building, uh, buildings, but that's what I'm. Mean. Or now, I even either go to an art store like uh, Blix. Hobby Lobby, I like that. Being around artists, I wish there was an artist community that you can talk to. That inspires me. It, yeah, it does. I know you've been involved with, I saw something in the newspaper about the art community and how to bring more creativity and art to the Savannah area. Yeah. I thought I saw, I thought I saw something like that. Yeah. Hold, on, hold on one sec, I think they went somewhere I want to that they went at the door. I want them to take that um Louise. Oh, Toy, y'all going? Are they going? Yeah, they going. No, uh, the the boxes. Yeah. Tell them to melt the, the melt that off. It was going out market. Yeah, they were going to the door. Uh, and they forgot the uh, boxes to melt off. So no. Anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I probably have kept you so long. I no, just no, 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 no. This is good. But they doing what they got to do. But no, I like what you said about. That's the mistake with um, people learning to paint. To get over with, with what you just said, being intimidated by that. Or they can't find the creativity or yeah how do you, how do you find um the inspiration how do you decide what you're going to paint next uh by uh where am i by uh getting involved with people and it and seeing a circumstance that need to be saved i'm not a writer but I, I'm a visual person. Mm -hmm. So like, it's, it's like, for example, even talking with you, I'm saying, oh, you know, this is going to be said, this is going to come, not just a painting, I guess getting involved with life. Yeah. Getting involved with life. And um, I love writers. They're so expressive. When I'm a visual person, I want to express. You are. Yeah. Very expressive. But I want to uh, put that in the paintings. That's hard. I have one more painting here. What is this one here? Oh, good. That's a lady. I don't know her name. 1830s. Uh, 
she was a philanthropist, ex-slave. I forgot her name. My wife wouldn't know. I love how it, it really borders on the abstract. You just, I mean, you've got the face down, but the, I love how loose the clothing is and the background is. It's just a, a wonderful combination. And now to me, that there is, um, I started off painting and I didn't know what to go. I didn't know where I wanted to go. I left it alone. But I am saying that, and I'm, see, the problem with that painting, I'm trying to make it a um, Carl Fugaru's, my old teacher's exact eyes, nose, right? And that's, that's why I get in trouble. It doesn't look like trouble to me. Like, tell me what you mean, trouble. What? what? Well, because I'm trying to make it a photograph. Oh, the face part. The but the, the flow is not. I mean, look at the, the clothing in the background. That's not a photograph. But that's so, that's more impressionistic. Yeah. Than, and we we'll see, my imprinting was being, if you are, if you see a John Locker, you see how exact he was. Okay. Everything. And so, a lot of times, giving away from your, teachers is important I have, I, I, I have a saying that I want to eradicate all my teachers out of my head totally eradicate them so it can just be you yes yeah, yeah. teaching is good but again that comparison is yeah. uh, is kind of productive to creativity I'm so how would you Kenneth, how would you make the face more impressionistic the next time you do that, if you want to go in that direction? Good point. I would find out what do I want to say? Do I want to, what, what? what expression I want to say? What do I want it to come out? And to me, it's between the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. This triangle area here says everything. So what do, what do I want to say? And you How can would see, you make that more impressionistic, though? Uh, good question. If you want to, I mean, it, I, I mean, I want to look at it. I don't know. I want to look at it and see. I might just leave it alone. Well, <laughs> I, would, I would leave that alone, but I know. Yeah, I would leave it alone. Certain things, I try to fix. I mess up. I oh, say, I would. She's she's wonderful. But if you ever did another portrait i mean if you made it all oh very yes i would start off very simplistic see i start off with too much paint i didn't start off establishing value tones same thing okay i didn't start i saw with too much paint trying hmm. to yeah too much paint mm -hmm. now i'm leaving it alone i established my value tones first stay in the box then i walk the box Okay. And this is, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I'm trying to think what else. Um, I, here's a cute picture of us about a number of years ago, probably five years ago, when we all met right where you're sitting right now. And uh, that's, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's good. Cute. That's when I realized I gotta get Kenneth. That's yeah, that, that's good. That was that's a nice one. On that's all the um, all this amazing philosophy you have on art, I just was like, wait, I need to be writing this down. Yeah, but well, you know what? Where am I now? I I really want to combine writing. You are right. You you are a writer. I impress with writers. But y'all say a lot of words. Me, but combine. That's what I want to say with my writing, with my painting. Mm -hmm. I want the people to say, and to pour. I want a person who's reviewing it to pour out what they see in it. If each person sees something different, like like an opponent. Gosh, Kenneth, how about if you tried it? How do you mean? 
just the way you encourage the vets to paint. Uh -huh. How about if I encourage you to write? Yes, please do. Yep, absolutely. Please. Not yeah. scary. But what's the fundamentals of writing? What's, what's the foundation? I'm going to tell you what painting the foundation of it, like I said, value tones, arrangement, mm -hmm. and color. What's the fundamental of someone who wants to learn how to express something? Because again, my challenge I'm dealing with dyslexia. I had a long for some reason it can, I can know what I want to think, but to get it on paper is mm -hmm. like a, a disconnect. I bet there's a way to even verbally you know put it through a, a tape recording or something. Um, you know, usually when the artist is so creative, they can also uh, be very descriptive with their words. You know what? You just quoted my first teacher in the 90s, Gilda Stone. She's a, she's a kinder. In every oil painter, painter, deep down, there's a writer. I, I believe that. I didn't know what she was talking about. But I said what she means. I want to express things in words. And I want to combine that in a painting, but maybe that's why I, that painting of the old man. I did the this one, this one right here. Yes, I did the painting, but Teresa looked at it and she did the words. Wow. Have you? Have, can you read the words? Can you? I read can't. Them? Yeah, they're too small. Oh, um, let me. Let me see if I can. Um, it's called it's called Beauty Marks. That's the painting. And let me see if I can get it. It is powerful. The Beauty Marks. I know I got it somewhere. Don't go nowhere. You know what we could also do is put it below in the comment section when you find it. We can copy and paste it. Oh yeah 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 yeah. This one. I got it. I know I have it. You know what? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have Chris print it out, like type it out, and, and uh, send it to you. Yeah, if she could, and I'll just put it in the comments section under yeah, YouTube yeah. where it's streaming. It's, it's, it's really my it's, essence is saying uh, he struggled hard, he worked hard, but no one, no one knew his name. And the beauty marks really represent the scars and the uh, struggles of life. But that's a, she saw that and then she goes, I had a, a French person write a um, overlay over the painting. Wow. Kenneth, I would love to see you do that with your words with the woman with the books on her head. Oh. Yeah. And see, it doesn't I, need to rhyme. It doesn't, it just, what's coming from your heart? That what's the message you want the world to know? Yes. I've, okay. I'll do that. I know some people that can help me with that. Close people. There's a veteran. Her name is, uh, we call her Blue. She's an Iraqi uh, veteran. She's another great artist. Uh, she, she does not like getting into the limelight like a Leroy does. She's very, but that girl is good. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe between her and Leroy, if I could pull her in there. It's just another creative outlet that, yeah. that I bet you didn't realize you had. You I, don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't. I, I'm sure you, I'm sure it's there. Your teacher was right. I mean, Creativity is creativity, however it, it this manifests. One, Mark, this, this one sounds strange, but I'll be 77 in March 11th. I'm still trying to discover who I am. <laughs> Kenneth, don't you believe our whole life we try to discover who we are? We should. Mm -hmm. Because we, we may know at 40, but I guarantee you, if you hit 55, you, 40 will look, look like I was just not too smart at 40 or at 30. <laughs> yes, it's, a, it's about being in it, like being an adventure. What would you tell your 20 year old self? Oh. 
I would tell him, don't get rattled at life. Learn how to adjust. Learn how to adjust and be grown. Don't get rattled. Things change. Don't sell every, don't sell your emotions, your intellect on this concept, on, on this movement. It changes. Find mm -hmm. out who you really are. And when you find that person out, that person is going to adjust and change. How, and how do you find out who you really are? That uh, getting involved with people, getting involved with people who disagree with you, uh, getting people who might be your critics. Uh, <laughs> okay, yes. And don't get, don't, you know, get involved with people in life. I can teach you. And don't get this sold out on yourself. We get too stuck on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Also, we get too stuck on our culture. Our culture teaches us what our culture can be wrong. Mm -hmm. Our culture can be wrong. A good example, I was talking, I was listening to a lady, she was born and raised in App Appalachia. And she's a young person. And she knew nothing about uh, Hitler and, uh, and, and uh, concentration camps, nothing. Wow. She, she left Appalachia and went to school and she, her man just blown everything. But you can blame her without, you can blame her that was our culture. Our culture teaches us. When I was in Detroit, born and raised, I thought white was white. Black was black. That was it. Mm -hmm. White culture. Moved to Miami, Florida, in uh, the uh, the early seventies. A. Hey, I saw dark skinned people speaking. I can understand him. Latino, Haitian, I, in the same family. I saw light skinned people look just like you in the same family. Mm -hmm. What was that? So I'm learning. Exposure is the word. You expose yourself to different people from cultures are different than you. Mm -hmm. Concepts are different than you. Not that you're going to adapt them, but you're going to learn from them. And you surprise if you come out of that. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Another yeah. great Kenneth Martin <laughs> philosophy. Yeah. I'm not, that's, what, that, that's what I would tell a kid in the 20s. So tell me what your grandchildren um, say. Yeah, my grandfather always tells us that. Is there something that you reiterate to them? Yes. Oh, there's so much stuff. <laughs> they, they always oh. talk about me saying things. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, thank Because how many grandchildren do you have? Grandchildren is like 19-ish. Mm -hmm. And great-grandchildren I have. My great-granddaughter, Michelle, I, like I said, she'll be 17 in August. And she is just beautiful. She's a writer, intellect, uh, no nonsense, not going to get bogged down in what people say, how people do, uh, what she's supposed to be. She's an artist also. She has a, she she holds a, a Savannah tape. She's a she's an artist. She knows the artist. Have have you given her some art lessons? Yes, yes. Awesome. I, not, not, not lessons as far as how to draw concepts and how to think more than how to draw. And um, whoa, okay, let's explore this a little bit more. How to think and not so much how to draw. Tell me about. Let's go down that road a little bit. How to draw is technique. You know, this principle, that principle, that goes to that, you know, that's that's techniques. You right. can teach anybody that. But how to think. Uh, what would you tell her? Or what, what have you told her? Learn, how to learn to express what you want to express. Now that's her. Learn to express what you want to say. Not mm -hmm. learn. Because in school, 
this color for that color, that line for that. They teach you impressionistic, but not how to think. And since you are a generation to me, I now this is a past, and I say, Michelle, you are smarter than I am. See, I don't know if I probably know you. No, you are smart. There's certain things you know, I don't know. Now, there's some things I know that you don't know. Mm -hmm. You are, you said, Eric, you're way smarter than me. Way smarter. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you're supposed to be. Because you, to go forward, you can't go on my knowledge or what, what, what I know. You gotta discover things, and that's how we invent things, new things. So that's what I tell them a lot. Mm -hmm. Just to be them. They'll be themselves. That's one thing. To discover who you are and not go on what I know. I'm, again, yeah, with TT, this is a name. Yeah. I'm trying to think who do I tell, tell them that might be. I can't think of it right now. And they always quoting stuff I say and I forget. I wish my, my daughter just left. She's always saying what I. Uh, same maybe someday you'll write a book on your wonderful quotes i i pulled out some of them but i know you have that's what uh, a lot of them that's what my daughter louise be saying i've been saying stuff so i don't i just say stuff so. well say. you've lived through so much you've had to adapt you've had to change so the the information the the advice that you give i mean people Hold on to it. I mean, you, you've you had to. And you know, that's what uh, I'm trying to break. Objectively, I realized, oh, my other great granddaughter, she's a first great granddaughter. She's a uh, ballet in Harlem. Uh, she went to Harlem, what was that dance troupe? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I thought I pictured her. She is, Anyway, she's great. She Aww. looks like um, what's a, a black ballet dancer, Angel? What's her name? The black ba the black ba ballet dancer. Uh, the black ballet dancer Kermit. The, the first one who is on the ballet in New York. Oh my goodness! But anyway, my granddaughter looks like her. Anyway, she asked me a question, a profound question. We were talking. And she, she said, Give me some questions. I said, What? She said, um, If you would you trade being in a good and not knowing the one or okay, not experiencing it, not experiencing the wheelchair, not knowing the or knowing us, but still being in this wheelchair, what would you do? I said, uh, <laughs> yo, I mm -hmm. thought, I really, I said, I said, let me think about that. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, boss, you know what? This experience here has molded me. Y'all molded me. I, I don't want to trade this. Wow. Now, this, this wheelchair is. It's tragic, it's hard, it's, you know, up, walking around. Uh -uh. I wouldn't want to give up uh, not knowing them, not expensive them. And wow. being in this chair has taught me a whole lot more than just walking around, working in the factory, and blah, 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 and doing nine to five. Uh, it, it's, a, it's very, it forced me. What's that saying about, uh, Pressure, fire, uh, hard. What's that magic about? When you put fire to steel, makes a diamond. Yeah, or a steel, like a steel metal. If you burn it hard enough, it makes it. There's a word. It's called um, damn thing. But as a person, trials really make us. We hate it. Pressure makes us. We hate it. I know we rather live on the beach and drink men's juleps and watch the sun go down, but that don't teach you nothing. 
going through your tragedy, going through pain, if you go through it, it molds you, it teaches you. So I guess me being this wheelchair has taught me more so that I don't see. You know, Kenneth, I mean, a, a lot of people that go through these hardships turn to alcohol, they commit suicide. I mean, yes, yes. It, it takes fortitude and incredible courage to go forward. And that's, you know, we love hearing your story of how you went forward because it wasn't easy. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. I don't really, I never have had a hope. Clinical psychiatrist to sit down and talk to um, day one, and um, always wonder, well, you know, yeah, I never wonder about that. I just my philosophy is go forward, get up, go forward, get up, go forward. Uh, some certain days are a cruise, you cruise through. Certain days is a workout. Certain days is a fight. It's mm -hmm. a workout fight mentally, emotionally, physically, just to get out the bed and go forward. Obstacles. But then again, you go through that the next day, it's a cruise. Say, so, okay, just don't don't just don't yeah. yeah. Let me say what I'm saying. You got mm -hmm. certain day, and, and even with you, certain days it's, it's a cruise. Certain days it's a sweat. It's a battle. It's butt kicking day. Yeah. <laughs> it, is. it is, but then again, you go back, you relax at night, and get up, and that's that's the fight. Once you realize that, okay, like I'm saying, okay, that's what it is. I just move on, and that's what you do. Know? And it's even art, art, the same way, creative, the same way. It's the same thing. Painting, the same way. Drawing, the same way. It's a way of getting out of yourself. Great. Yeah. And you and you pass that on to those vets that have all that's, that's our show. Yeah. Now we don't go there. Sometimes we're gonna we just we just talk and have fun. But sometimes we speak in the share certain things. It's like when I first started with the veterans, um especially the ones the Vietnam vets, mm -hmm. they we, we will start doing with color, greens. And light greens and blacks, and when I said, "Oh, this reminds me of fatigues, green fatigue." Oh, this reminds me in the Vietnam in uh, the jungle. Oh, this reminds me of the uh, 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 rock monkeys. Jungle monkeys. What's that? The monkeys used to come out of the bush, get into their tents, and take their food. They not only had to fight the, the Viet Cong, they had to fight the animals. And then when they were in battle or our war, the, the tigers, especially up the northern part of uh, Vietnam, where the Bingo tigers were, the tigers were hit at fighting battle and dead men. What's that to them? Food. Mm. So they had to fight the Bingo tigers. And all that came to mixing pain. But that didn't come the first day. That came after they didn't relax and talk about that. So certain colors would kick off certain experiences. This is the fatigues. So um, I don't know why I said that. That's you. That's OK. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, I don't know why I said that. But but yeah, so they begin the um, that experience of art and creativity. But that's one of some of the things that it would bring out uh, as far as going through trauma and so forth. The art has a way of going deeper than just surface stuff if you get into it. That's why art is so, lack of that word, therapeutic. <laughs> So it gets you out of yourself and let you explore other out things. Your head and into your heart. Into your, and, and other worlds, or your own world, and not mm -hmm. the trauma you're going through. 
Well, that Kenneth, you're great. such an inspiration. I just, I, I can't believe we've been talking an hour and a half. Okay, okay, yeah. We got to do it. Sometimes we got to, but I, I always want to sit and talk with you because you, I can share things with you that, Jimmy, I don't talk to people. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not Teresa, but I don't sit down and express myself. I just don't. I mean, I do a first, but not sit down and say, come on, let's, what, what, what we're doing now. Yeah. You got more out of me and I don't have than my family got out in 20, 30 years. But I just don't. I hope so because they, I, I just think this information is so important for other people. And yeah. so thank you for sharing it. Now, if you need to go for anything else, let me know and if you need some clarity on anything, let me know. I will. Kenneth, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to share your heart yeah. with the viewers. And um, this will be up on YouTube. And it's a long interview. Oh, but it, I'm glad to, to capture a lot of your philosophies on art and how you approach a painting. Yes. I, I hope you edit some of this stuff. It doesn't need editing. It's wonderful. Jeez. Every minute of it. Every okay. minute. Now let's get together with the veterans and the other the other ladies, the heart people, the heart, yeah. the yeah. heart initiative. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to um, set that up and yeah. actually, I'll go ahead and, and end the, this broadcast. And I'm going to thank everybody for watching this this wonderful man, Kenneth Martin, and his wonderful art. And if you need any more information on how to um, get any of his artwork you just go to kennethmartinart.com there's yeah. a lot of paintings up there and i believe there's contact information there too so all right i'm gonna don't don't go away kenneth but i'm gonna end the broadcast thank you for watching and we'll talk soon